Coming up now on the Blessings and Connection. Into you the breath of life. You, you, you got to see it. Way back there in the Garden of Eden, God is down and he's scooping up some dust. And as he scoops up that dust, he starts to shape that dust. And as he shapes that dust, he blows into the nostrils of that creation the breath of life. And the Bible says that scoop of dust became a living man. And, and, so, and so today I'm talking to living men and living women, and I know today you have the breath of life in you. And so the question is, when God scooped up the dust to make me, when God scooped up the dust to make you, what did God have in mind? There's a purpose in life while we're living. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life. We're working hard to be with you, Jesus. We're working hard to be with you. What must I do to be saved? And so, if you don't mind, I want to tag this sermon, Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Think about it for a moment. It seems as if that life is a series of questions. One question after the other. What time are you going to get up? What are you going to have for breakfast? Which way are you going to the job? What time are you coming home? What do you want for dinner? What time will you be ready to go to bed? Life is filled with questions. And if, in fact, we refuse to answer the questions, if, in fact, we ignore the questions, then I believe we do ourselves a disservice. That we must sit and we must focus and we must hear the questions. And when we hear the questions, we must say, I heard it and here's my answer. Because when you reveal your answer, it reveals your position. It helps you to stabilize. It helps you to know which direction to go. When, in fact, you answer the question, if you refuse to answer the question, you can walk through life aimlessly, bumping over this and that, tripping over your own shoelaces. Somebody said life is filled with questions. Say it for me. Do you, do you remember the TV program? Batman and Robin. You remember? It was one of my favorites as a little boy growing up. It was nothing like walking in the house and hearing da 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 One of the, one of the star characters that kept appearing over and over was a guy who asked questions after questions. Anybody remember his name? The Riddler, had, the Riddler had one question after the other, and, 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 and it was so designed that if Batman and Robin wanted to move to the next level, they could not help but answer the question. If Batman and Robin wanted to be successful, if Batman and Robin wanted to fix whatever the problem was, if they wanted to accomplish greatness, they had to stop, hear the question, and then And so this morning, can I tell you that life, life seems to have a series of questions that keep coming over and over again. Perhaps the very first question that we ought to ask is, where did I come from? Now, if you answer that question, I came from a monkey, then you won't have any problems answering the next question because the next question is why am I here? You're going to say I'm here to eat bananas. And if you answer that question, I'm here to eat bananas, then you don't have any question, any problem at all with the next question, which is where am I going? You're going to the zoo. 
And so again, it, it, it's, it's, it's important to, to get traction. It's important to identify your position. It's important to answer the questions. And after you answer the question, then you can move to the next level. Somebody say answer the questions. I want to be bold enough to suggest to you that to fail to answer the questions, to fail to just sit down and give thought to questions, to just drift through life, to just follow the crowd, to just travel down life's road aimlessly is reckless. And not only is it reckless, it's wasteful. Not only is it reckless and wasteful, it's absolutely insane. Where are you going? Nowhere. What do you mean? I'm just here. No, 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 no. Can I suggest that when God made you, he made you with a purpose. Touch the person next to you and tell them you got purpose. You got purpose. And so one of the questions that I heard as a child, one of the very first questions early on was a purpose driven question. The question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? What, what do you want to be when you grow up? Any, when you grow up, anybody remember a grandparent or a parent or a relative asking you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I know, I know if I took a mic and walked around the crowd today, people would have different answers. Somebody would say I wanted to be a nurse. Somebody would say I wanted to be a school teacher. And so all sorts of answers would surface. Can I tell you that what I wanted to be was a fireman? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether or not it was that red truck. I don't know whether or not it was the siren. I don't know whether or not it was the helmet and the suit, but all of those made me want to say, I want to be a fireman. But this morning, as we sit here this morning, I, I, I want to ask a question and I want everybody to hear the question. And I want to ask the question from the position that today I'm the preacher. No, it's not grandmother asking you. It's not a relative asking you. This morning, it's a representative of God looking you in the face and asking you today, what do you want to be when you grow up? Don't, 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 don't miss it because I'm not just talking to the kids. Somebody says, well, he's talking to the kids. No, I'm not just talking to the kids. Somebody says, no, he's talking to the teens. They just graduated. No, I'm not just talking to the teens. Somebody says, he's talking to someone that's just starting out in life. No, I am talking to all of those, but I am also talking to each one of us. Don't miss it. I believe as long as we have breath in our lungs, we have a purpose. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I believe as long as we have life within us, we can recreate ourselves. We can become even better. We can become newer. We can become what God would have us to be. And so this morning, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to disengage. I, I want you to ask yourself this morning, what do you want to be? when you grow up. I want you to think about that. Because inside each one of us there is the seed of greatness. Inside of you today there is something that God Almighty blew into you when he blew into you the breath of life. You, you, you got to see it. Way back there in the Garden of Eden, God is down and he's scooping up some dust. And as he scoops up that dust, he starts to shape that dust. And as he shapes that dust, he blows into the nostrils of that creation the breath of life. And the Bible says that scoop of dust. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to try. 
And so, inside of you right now is the potential to be a great mom. Inside of you right now is the potential to be a great man of God. Inside of you right now is the potential to be a doctor. Inside of you is the potential to be a lawyer. Inside of you there is the potential to be a scientist, a businessman. It is inside of you. Somebody shout, it's inside of me. Everybody shout, it's inside of me. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship 10 a.m., evening worship 5 p.m., and on Wednesdays our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at connect with him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to try. And so, inside of you right now, is the potential to be a great mom. Inside of you right now is the potential to be a great man of God. Inside of you right now is the potential to be a doctor. Inside of you is the potential to be a lawyer. Inside of you there's the potential to be a scientist, a businessman. It is inside of you. Somebody shout, it's inside of me. Everybody shout, it's inside of me. Oh, 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 if we could see as God sees. If we could see what God has done in each of our lives. So many times we look at the circumstances and the situations that's in front of us and we let the circumstances and the situations trip us up instead of looking at God and say, God, you made me for this moment. I know that nothing has happened to me as an accident. I know you framed my world. I know I'm part of you. God, what do you want for this moment? Listen, listen to how Peter describes us speaking for God. He says, you are a chosen. It's, 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 when, he, when he says it's like you're chosen people, it's almost as if God was going through the line and not you, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. What are you doing with God? I'm choosing you. I had a number of people that I could have chosen, but I chose you. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm chosen. Hold, hold your head up and tell them, I'm chosen. I, I'm chosen. And, and, then, and then he says, you are a royal. You, you're about royalty. I, I wish I could see your crown right now. I, I wish I could see your robe. You, you know you're a crown. You know you have the robe on right now. Peter says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So hear me. Hear me. I don't care what you think. Hear me say this. No, you are not too short. No, no, you are not too tall. No, no, you are not too fat. No, no, you are not too tall. No, no, your hair is not too kinky. No, no, your lips are not too thick. No, no, your nose is not too wide. Because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God needed you together. And God does not make junk. Who, who, who am I supposed to be 
when I grow up. I'm supposed to be all that God would have me to be. I'm supposed to be able to touch the sky because I have the seed of greatness in me. I'm supposed to be able to soar like an eagle because I have the seeds of greatness in me. No matter what you say about me, Mr. Employee, no matter what you say about me, Mr. Spouse or Miss Spouse, I'm God's creation. If, if, if you feel what I'm saying today, I want you to repeat after me. He made me. He created me. I can be whatever. Nothing can hold me back. Nobody can hold me back. Because if God be for us, who, who can be against us? And, 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 so, and so today, right in the middle of the sermon, I, I want you to kind of kick your head back. I don't, I don't care what's going on, kind of kick your head back. Throw your chest out a little bit. And, and, and know that you are God's special project. And you are right where you are right now because God knew that you were going to be here and he decreed that you be here and in this place you can be all that God would have you to be. And somebody says, where are, you, where, are you, where are you trying to go? Well, let me give you a contemporary illustration. Stay with me. In, in May, in May of 1979, 36 years ago, in Honolulu, a young man with funny ears and a funny name graduated from high school. He had come through some difficult times, but he graduated from high school. He left his city and he went off to Occidental College in Los Angeles. Three years later, 1981, he transferred to Columbia College, now called Columbia University in New York City. He graduated with a degree in political science. Five years later, he, he entered law school at Harvard Law School in Boston, Massachusetts. In 1991, he graduated with a Juris Doctorate degree as a lawyer. He graduated magna cum laude. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, his name is... Don't let the obstacles, don't let the situations that you encounter minimize your greatness. You are God's child. So, so, so that's a question. That's the question that, that in a sense we all must ask and we all must answer. That. And, and, and so you answer that question, you keep answering that question, that question is still running around in my head. I was dealing with that question this morning. Who am I supposed to be when I grow up? Ask yourself that. But, but you know, there are other questions, and sometimes some questions can get us in trouble. Some questions can bless us, but some questions can curse us. Another question that is often asked and, 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 and needs to be answered carefully is the question, will you marry me? That, 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 that's a question. You, you can see it in the back of your mind. Somebody asking the question, will you marry me? And so, so before anybody answers that question, somebody ought to reflect and somebody, all of us ought to reflect on the questions that's asked during the ceremony. Here are the questions. Will you take this man or this woman to be your wedded husband or your wedded wife, will you love and comfort? Will you honor and keep from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness, and in hell, till death do you part. 
Ladies and gentlemen, those are some deep questions. Somebody ought to say amen. And, 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 and so the answer doesn't come easy because we don't know what we're getting into. We have an idea, but many things happen after you say, I do. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Too many times, people answer that question. Too many times, people rush into marriage without giving thought to these deep and perplexing questions. But, 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 but I want to say this, and I want everybody to hear me. I, I want to suggest today that physical attraction alone cannot keep a marriage together. Oh, I think I said something right there. You, you see, that's the first stimulation. We look at her and we say, woo We look at him and say, ha, ha. But, but that's just the initial, that's the eye level, that's physical attraction. He, he, hear me now, hear me, hear me. She might be a walking Coca-Cola bottle, a brick house, a 36, 24, 36. He might be a walking six-pack, a Hulk, a Arnold Schwarzenegger, but, but none of that stuff will hold you to death do you part. You see, most of that stuff, if not all of that stuff, is going to wither, wrinkle, and fall away. Anybody want to say amen right there? I, I, I want to give you an illustration because I, I know, I know that first attraction, that, that look that gets you all excited. But, but, but hear me say again, physical attraction is not enough. And, and I want to use an illustration. Anybody remember the movie King Kong? Yes, sir. You, remove, you remember the movie King Kong? Kind of nod your head. I, I, I've got so many scenes of that movie in my head. W one of the scenes is King Kong on top of the Empire State Building just beating his chest. Another one is King Kong going through New York City. He's mad. He's throwing cars. He's throwing things. He's just tearing up New York City. But the one I want you to have in your head right now is I want you to see King Kong with a beautiful blonde in his hand. And then start asking yourself, now how crazy is that? A gorilla? Somebody say gorilla. A gorilla in love with a woman. This gorilla is so crazy that this gorilla starts to fight for this woman. This woman is so crazy she starts to cry for this gorilla. This is absolutely insane. Well, anybody see the point? See, 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 I, I believe it's easy for us to accept the question and answer too quickly and we end up with somebody that we don't have anything at all in common with. I, I believe that in order for a marriage to work, there ought to be some common ground. If somebody's saying, I, I, I like going to church with you. Somebody says, no, I, I like going to the games with you. Somebody says, no, 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 I, I just like being with you. And, and so this morning, there are tons of questions that flow through the air that you and I must answer, and we must give an answer and then govern ourselves accordingly. But can I tell you, the most important question anybody will ever ask is the question, what must I do to be saved? Somebody shout. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to try. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's the question that you and I need to answer. That's the question that rings in my ears today. What would it profit me? What would it profit you? If we got all of the things we wanted, we, we got the right job, we got the right income, we got the right house, we got the right car, we got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so 
You, you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about? It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, now good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works. It's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sins. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the blessing connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Did you get enough to eat? Isn't it wonderful how God's Word is just the spiritual food that we need? So come join us next week. I'll be saving you a spot at the table. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m., evening worship, 5 p.m., and on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT.